Life hurts. Every day we go through trials and tribulations, but I want you to know that you are really special and you have a life ahead of you. We want to work on self-healing. We want to work on self-love. I want you to know that you are a queen that you are destined to be. And with this here podcast, you're going to learn that. And I want you to listen to every story that a woman has and just know, let's work, baby. Off me and my husband a lot lately and right now this will be an exclusive interview with myself and Mr. Lloyd in the building a lot of people don't get a chance to hear him speak much everyone get to see my pose or hear my love story as everyone would say and it's nothing like you actually hearing it from him himself so hi mr lloyd hello miss lloyd <laughs> <laughs> you saw you like head clubbing <laughs> <laughs> <It's sick. laughs> don't start your best <laughs> you are crazy so how did you find me oh well Way back in the middle times. No, let me stop. (laughs) No. (laughs) Well, babe, to be honest, you know, as you already know, and I will let the listeners know, I just so happened to be incarcerated. And I had a cellmate who was from Akron, Ohio. Uh, I won't give his last name, but his first name was Gino. And he happened to get this newspaper. Now, listen, I love to, I have like a book. I love to read. I devour novels, newspapers, and everything. So he happened to get the Akron Beacon Journal, and he threw it on my bed. I sat down, I read it, and I came across this wonderful article about this young woman. And Deontay was in the article, too. But it was this young woman who happened to have a young women's program. And my passion was, once upon, you know, when I was released, that I wanted to pursue helping young men. So as I began to read this article, I saw that you had the same passion as I. And I said, Lord, should I or should I not call this young woman because I am in prison? So I sat on my bunk and it just like it just like kept eating at me. So all of a sudden I just jumped up and I, <laughs> and I ran to the phone. And I, I prayed, I really prayed. I was like, Lord, please. I was like, let her pick up. And as I heard, this call is from a federal inmate. To accept this call, press five. You answered. And at that moment right there, I was like, wow. And you, our conversation, it just went on and on. And it was as if I knew you all my life. I've known you all my life. And, you know, I didn't want to take it, you know, I didn't want to take it as if I was, like, trying to pursue you, which, to be honest, I really was way back back then. It wasn't wasn't, uh, wasn't the type of uh, uh, pursuing as if I was, like, you know, starving or hungry, but I just realized that you had the same passion and drive that I had. So, you know, after we ended our call and I was like, can I call you again? You're like, sure. And I was like, okay. But at this particular time, let me let the listeners know that I was in a relationship and I really didn't want to uh, um, cross those lines. So I always kept it professional in business with you. You know, and that's one thing that I appreciated you know, out of you because I, I believe at this particular time you were in a relationship too. Yes. And, you know, uh, I just, just wanted to keep it respectful. You know, even though that passion was burning deep down inside. <laughs> oh, God, you sick. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> So, how did everything go after that? You know, did you guys, did me and you keep in contact? 
But. Yes, we kept in contact, but just like uh, Hussein Boat, you put them tennis shoes on and you kept running and running and running, running and like running and running. Up. You ran several <laughs> times. <laughs> you know? Y'all listen, I just, I don't know. I got, I got nervous to a point where I just didn't want to um, just date somebody. You know, somebody mm-hmm. calling you out the blue. You know, he's like, he in prison. Oh, he just wants something on his books. He just wants some type of pillow talk. You know, I don't know. I was just, I, I thought negative at first. That's what I did. But at the same time, if anyone knows me, you know, I love helping people. I love um, speaking life into them and everything. So I'm like, okay, this could just be a friend, you know. So I didn't even think of it that way for a very long time. Um, he was very respectful, had a had a good heart, and he was very educated. You could tell by his language, um, by the things that he say and everything. But but you know what cool. you know what I really respected about you is how I remember uh, we started emailing each other, and from that very first email, I wish to God that I still had that email. You always talk about that email. Yes. But in that email, it is, it's like you poured your soul out to me. That was the first email. I'm serious. That was the first one. And after reading that email, I, I really couldn't believe you began to tell me about your grandfather and your grandmother. And I was like, Lord, man, she don't know me. Why Why is he pouring her soul out to me? But God just began to tell me that, hey, that's just you. Yeah, but you know, sometimes it's easier for people to talk to someone they don't know compared to somebody they know to. All right. So you got that aspect and just the fact of just having somebody to talk to. Right. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but I love the fact that even though I was in prison, you never judged me. Nah. You know, and at that particular time, I probably was in prison probably about probably about 13 or 14 years at that time. And you know you did your thorough investigation. You I know, did. <laughs> I had to make sure you went no rapist, <laughs> child predator. <laughs> I had to make sure because you know you can't trust folks right. when they up in there. So I ain't know what you had going on, but your rap sheets. Oh, Jesus, y'all. When I see <laughs> when I see his record, I'm like, what you from Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the world. Man. Like, he and Dago, uh, <laughs> but but for the G.I. Joe. <laughs> but for the for the record, you know, just to let everybody know that um, uh, you know, I I was incarcerated from like nineteen ninety seven until what, twenty nineteen or something like that. But my crime had nothing to do with children, murders, rape or anything like that. It was like you know, I was one of those guys to go get this money out by any means necessary. So, you know, I don't care if it was drugs, robbery, or whatever. I mean, that was my M.O. But it took that, you know, for me to grow up because I look at it like this. While I was out there on the streets, I didn't care if I lived or died. But after God allowed for me to sit down and see how important life really was, you know, and then coming in contact with you, you gave me reasons to live. And I just want to tell you, thank you, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, yeah. Um. So, how would I explain this? What led you in prison besides drugs and selling drugs and all the extra activities? You well, were I mean, basically, you know, I was one of those kids who, you know, um, who I, I grew up in church, you know, and at a particular age, I think I, I would say around about 12 or 13, I decided that, you know, hey, church wasn't for me. I love the streets. You know, I had a cousin who was like, I'm talking about he was crazy. You remember like, uh, uh, what's that guy from The Wire, Omar? Omar. Well, that was my cousin, but except he didn't mess with the, you know what I'm saying? I don't care what nobody else do, but he was Omar getting that money, any means necessary. 
And I was just like, that was a life that I gravitated to. And I, you know, I was fascinated with it. Not knowing that that really wasn't the lifestyle that I really wanted because the re end result was for me to spend those 21 years in prison. What led you to that? Even though you was growing up in church and everything, mm -hmm. what led you to the streets? Just being hard-headed? Hard-headed. Hard-headed. I didn't want to hear what my mama said about church. I'm talking about we went to church... Uh, Wednesday, Friday, I mean, it was boring in church, you know, and I mean, and then as I spent those years in prison, that was the one thing that I was really compassionate about because I went to church in prison faithfully, <laughs> and you couldn't get me to do that on the street, you know That's what I'm saying? Crazy. <laughs> That's straight ass <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, because, but you know what? It was like, it was, you know, coming up, I would actually be asleep in church. But as I began to sit on that bunk for all those years, the words that that pastor was preaching to me <laughs> began to wake me up. Mm. You know, and when I thought I was asleep, those words were keeping me safe. And I remember my coming in one time, and I used to see my mama on the, on the floor just praying to my Lord, protect my children, touch Preecy. Well, that was, my, that was my nickname. My real name is James. She was like, touch Preecy. And I just look at her like, what's she doing praying for me? I don't need no prayer. You know what I'm it's saying? <laughs> but, you know, I mean. But it, it covered you, too. It, it covered me. It sure did. After all these years until today. Yes, yes. It's covered you. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm proud to say this, that throughout all those years in my incarceration, that I didn't have any problems. And I was in two maximum security prisons, three medium security prisons, and two low security prisons without any problems now i'm not the biggest man i'm not the toughest man but the lord had them angels around me mm -hmm. and those same angels that were up on my life mm -hmm. all those years came and they stood up for me and they brought me through and they blessed me with a beautiful wife a nice home i don't have no worries i'm a hard-working man and i'm deeply in love with my beautiful wife mm. Mm. <laughs> but I'm just saying no, you know, I know what you mean though so what about your childhood how was it like with your relationship with your with your parents well you know my, my parents you know this is one thing I say about my mother and my father Alice and Joseph Quinn they stuck they stuck by me regardless you know what I'm saying there was a time when uh I happened to be in uh FCI Gilmer and it was snowing like I don't know what. My mom was like, baby, I'm coming to see you. I was like, mom, please don't come see me. She was like, why, boy, why wouldn't I come see you? I was like, mom, there's going to be a snowstorm. She was like, listen, I've been driving since before you was born. She was like, I'm from Ohio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'll never forget that day. I was at work. Uh, I was at work at the prison factory, and it came across a loudspeaker. Inmate Lloyd, oh, whatever, whatever, report the visitation. And I was like, wow. As I began to walk across that visitation yard, I seen all the snow around me. And I looked, came into that visitation room, and I seen my mom and my dad. It was just like, you know, it just, it just showed me that, you know, through thick and thin, through thick and thin, that those who love you are going to be there. Definitely. Um, who taught you to be the man that you are towards a woman like me? <sighs> Mr. Joseph Quinn. I seen this man, you know. Now, my mama was a feisty woman. And there used to be times when she used to be yelling at my dad and this and that and even threw a cup at him one day. And in my mind, I was like, beat her. <laughs> you sick. I'm serious. I was like, get her, dad, get her. <laughs> but he just politely just got up and got his coat, and he just, you know, he just went and cooled off. And then I would see how he would, she would be doing the dishes, and he would come behind her and kiss her. And I seen how he would open the door for her. I seen how through it all my dad was there just to love my mom. And I said, when I get older, when I get married and serious, that's exactly how I'm going to treat my wife. And that's why I treat you the way that I do, because I was taught the right way to love and treat a woman.
Mm, no, that's the truth. Thank you, Dad. No. <laughs> yeah, thank him. <laughs> seriously, seriously, babe. You know, I mean, that's what I believe young men right now, they, you know, they lack guidance. But I was so blessed. Even though he's my stepdad, he was really, he was really the dad, that, the only dad that I ever knew. And he just taught me how to love a real humble man, you know, and um, I tilt my hat to him. You know, even though, like I said, he was my stepdad, he brought me up in the ways of the Lord and how to treat a woman. That's a blessing. So how was your real father? Well, him and I, you know, we uh, we we had an, a, a strained, you know, uh, relationship. Uh, just like, you know, children of the day, you know, there were times when uh, he would promise to come get me and I would be sitting on the porch and waiting on my dad to come and he wouldn't come. Now, I don't knock him, you know, for any of that because I still love him. I love him today, you know, and him and I, we have rekindled our relationship he calls me sometimes. I call him, you know, and, and the respect respect and the love is, is still there, you know. But Joseph Quinn, he taught me how to be a man. That's a blessing. Just even for you to have that, and even though you're still hard with him. Hmm. <laughs> but the funny thing about it is, no, not the funny thing. The good thing about it is when I'm lacking, I can always pick up the phone and say, Dad. Can you help me? What would he say? <laughs> you take your side sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take your side. What you thought? So after you meeting me and us rekindling and everything, what brought us back together? Because, you know, after a while we lost communication. Right. Due to me running. Yeah, let me, I got to tell everybody this. Oh, shit. No, I got to tell them about those emails I used to send you and I used to be like, if there's anybody on the other side of the screen. <laughs> Y'all, he used to email me. <laughs> he used to be like, hello, anybody there? <laughs> oh, just responding to get these messages. Are you alive? <laughs> you did say that. Are you alive? And all that. And I just ignore him. So you actually really, really read those? Yeah, I read them. I keep telling you I read them. You just don't believe me. I read So you were torturing me like that, seriously? <laughs> y'all know, know look just he's saying now he's in a relationship at the time right but you know after a little while of us communicating and everything I wasn't in a relationship anymore at the time but when we were communicating y'all know when a dude <laughs> talking to another woman too oh or oh no no cause you was like no uh -huh. no this is what you were like you was like mm. <laughs> I feel somebody them took your attention away. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, whoa, how she know? <laughs> yeah, because, like, y'all know we send stuff like that. <laughs> and I just knew it. It's, it's, I don't know. It's like men's conversation. Certain things they say, certain things they do. Y'all can't multitask on different women because you have to be two different people. Right, right. So you're being one way <coughs> with one and you being actually yourself right. with one of them. So it, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I was scared, though, seriously. I was like, man, what's she, no, she a witch or something? <laughs> Don't play me I'm like that. I'm just saying, I mean, but, babe, I mean, I mean, it's like, how did you know? I serious, no, I mean, because I, I really thought, it. I'm serious, I really thought that I was just, like, keeping everything cool mm -hmm. and, being the same and this and that, you know, it's just like, and when you called me on that, I'm seriously, babe, that scared me. That put me in check. Yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> it put me in check. I bet it did. <laughs> but we really ain't talk much after that either. Right, right. There was there was a lapse in time. Yeah, you we know. didn't talk much at all. So, um, when we did talk back again, what made you call me again after so long? Well, what happened was... Uh, a young lady and I, she was from Cleveland. Uh, her and I, we had got real serious. I'm talking about she was real faithful and she was coming to see me. She was writing me and, you know, and things of that nature. And uh, we were contemplating marriage. So 
I didn't want to, you know, disrespect you and I didn't want to disrespect her. So that was, you know, that was the lapse in time, you know, but the same young lady who I was uh, engaged to, she ended up passing away. She died. And the conversation went, you know, went like this. Uh, her and I, we used to talk every day at every morning at seven o'clock in the morning. So uh, this one particular day, I'll never forget, I called and the phone went to voicemail. And uh, I'm like, man, that's strange because her and I, we had been communicating for like four years. And, uh, you know, she had been dealing with some health issues. So I ended up going to work and I was scared and I was praying. I was like, Lord, please protect her, whatever's going on. You know, because she was really, she was like my best friend. And... I came back from, uh, no, I couldn't come back from work because we were uh, last for rotation. So I couldn't get into the unit, you know, to make my, you know, make a call. So I didn't end up calling her until I say about four or five, about five o'clock. So as I called, uh, her mother answered the phone and she was like, uh, such and such has, uh, fell into a coma. And I was like, what? I mean, you know, I was just like, you know, totally devastated. And so about two weeks after that, uh, after her falling to the coma, she passed away. And I was mad at the Lord. I was mad at myself for, you know, being incarcerated, not being able to come out to support her or to go to her funeral and this and that. And I was just real bitter. And so, you know, uh, I didn't think I was going to make it. Until that day when some said, call your vets. And you tell the story from there. Well, what was happening in your life? I'm supposed to be doing the question. I'm an interviewer too. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all got to excuse the who real quick. <laughs> but um, just so happened, he's going through that situation. And at the time, I was in a relationship, and we were coming from Atlanta, Georgia, on a vacation. And I don't know, it was just something went on with him. He he went to sleep, and then in the middle of the night, about 4 a.m., he just woke up, and it was I was sleeping on the couch. He was sleeping in the bed because I was laying on the couch uh, watching TV. And... He just tapped me, get up. Next thing you know, he started pushing me, and I tried to get away from him. He wouldn't let me get away. Then next thing you know, I tried to run up the steps on numerous occasions. He dragged me back down the steps. Um, it got to a point he stood over me, hit me across my face. I had blood everywhere. And even a point in time, he tried to rape me and rip my clothes off and everything. And <clears throat> I ended up tricking him because every time I tried to run up the steps, I couldn't get all the way up the steps due to me having a dress on. So what I did was tie my dress up and then I asked him for some water because it was um, still blood in my mouth. So with me still having that, I end up getting him a way to go get me some water and the way uh, my room was it was in a far back so he had to go back in it because he claimed he was leaving and um <clears throat> so as he went back into the room i was plotting to hurry up and run up the steps this time without my dress stopping me and that's what i did i ran right up the steps ran straight out that door and I ran straight next door over to my mom's house, banging on the door to have her come out. And my mom was pissed. I mean, my mom was going to put that boy six, <laughs> seven feet under, maybe 10 feet under. She reached in for <clears throat> she, was, she was highly upset. But the way my mom goes off, she goes off love. Um, she like, and she knows that God has his ways of making people suffer without her making them suffer. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what she did. She then 
She didn't want to press charges on him or nothing. She just, all she asked was just to stay away from my child. Mm. And I was most definitely going to stay away from him. I don't know. I got this thing. It only take one time for me <clears throat> because I was going to end up being in prison myself because I, I can't deal with stuff like that. And I would want revenge if they go to sleep or anything. It's mm. just, I, I just know I would have wanted revenge. So I couldn't deal with something like that. And during that time when I was just battling it, I, I couldn't go to work for about two days because of how my mouth and stuff was. And during that whole time, I don't know, I just felt empty. I just didn't know what else to do, what else to say. And I'm just like, this is just crazy. And just so happened what James going through, what he going through, and then him not even knowing I'm going through something. No, I didn't. And then out of all days, we ain't talked in years. In years, years. <laughs> we, we literally I haven't talked number. in years. You said what? I kept that number. <laughs> <laughs> you always turn this up bits of goofy. But he just called me, and I just heard you have a, you have a call from. Collect call from yeah. inmate. <laughs> <laughs> and you like Lloyd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until they made you change it back. Oh, they yeah. Did. And I end up just answering it. Then it was like he sensed it. I really did. He sensed something was wrong. And it's so crazy. Me not knowing he going through something. He was more concerned off what was wrong with me. I could tell. Um, I mean, I could. I really... I really could tell, you know, because you used to be so open with me, and it was like, I could tell you had little guards up, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that veil was there, I just had to punch through that veil, and I, I, when I began to tell you what was going on with me, you was like, you really, you started just opening yourself back up to me, and I was just like, wow, you know, and just like... I told you, you know, as I was telling, you know, telling everybody else, I was really actually mad at the Lord, but he sent some, he sent some relief my way. And that was you. And you, uh, you helped chase all those, uh, those pains, those doubts, you know, you, you chasing them away. Yeah. You did the same for me. And what, what it was, was just the prayer. Like y'all, I prayed as much until he came into my life. I don't know. I, I had this like anger with God and I had no understanding of certain things. Why is this happening to me and why that? And I always question him. But when James came into my life, things like changed to a point where my faith started to develop even more. Right, because we used to, you know, that's one of the things I, you know, as I begin to trust in the Lord again, we begin to pray together. You know, and we, you know, we always kept things on a biblical level. And I remember I used to try to, like, they read this scripture. Read that. (laughs) (laughs) But you did that because because you were so busy, really. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even that. I think it was just me being shy and Mm -hmm. nervous and all that. It was just, it took me a long time. Y'all can't. I mean, if y'all see me then and hear how I pray now. Oh my gosh. It was like, man, you was like, I was like, when I, that first day when I asked you to pray, you looked at me like, nigga, is you serious? <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm just keeping it real. You know, it's like, you know, you, you was really like, man, I can't pray. Yeah. You know, but when you begin, to, you know, now it's like, you uh, evangelist or pastor to wipe the way you be praying. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, but it's, it just feel, it feels good and then to a point where we we healed each other. Right. You know, everybody's like, you need to see counseling and all that. We was each other's counselors. Right, right. Like, through it all. Through you know. it all and everything. But, you know, I, I, I mean... I had you, but that barrier, you know what I'm saying? That mom barrier, it was just like, you accepted me, but I was just like, how is her mom going to accept me? Is her mom going to know how much I love her, how much I care for her? 
you know, and it's, I remember, you know, I remember that day, I was like, well, let me call her, and deep down inside, he was like, no, don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. Hell to the dog, this <laughs> didn't play no games, when I did, y'all, I talked about him to her, so it was like I was kind of warming her up. So she didn't know what's going on. But, but but to be honest, I really the reason why I wanted you to do that because as you begin to travel, you know, down the high up and down the highway to come see me, I always wanted her to know where you were. You know, that you were okay. Because you know how you got this independent spirit where you just jump on the highway and you just go. But I wanted to assure her that you were all right. Yeah. You know, and so that's why I really wanted to talk to her and you know, it wasn't like to say Hey, I'm this new man in your life. I just wanted her to know that, you know, you were going to be safe. Yeah. I, I feel you. Mm-hmm. I feel you. Yeah. But it ain't working. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because if she knew I was going on the road so dang on much, she would have had a dang on fit. Yo, hit me on the road. She did that even when I was young, hopping on the road, going out of town just to go by right. myself. Right. So, you know me, I'm a daredevil. I just step out and just go somewhere. But I I smoothed her in Mm -hmm. to get to know you. And I think one of the biggest things she noticed was change in me. I started to get in tuned in with a lot of things. And that change come from, of course, me meeting you, but also us praying to each other and speaking Mm -hmm. life into each other. Right. So she, she noticed it. So what um what made you want to get married? How'd that come about? Because I realized that the life I used to live prior to incarceration, you know, messing with this woman, that woman, uh, it wasn't a life that I wanted to live when I, you know, when I came home. And when I began to tell my buddies that I was thinking about, well, what I was contemplating getting married, they was like, man, are you crazy? They was like, man, all the women out there, are you getting ready to meet? And you want to commit yourself to a one woman? And as me and one of my buddies, we were walking the yard. I said, such and such. I said, man, I'm thinking about asking her seriously to marry me. He was like, man, go for it. I was like, man, you know what? You're right. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> that one person. I mean, no, but be- because, babe, I realized that I couldn't do no better than you. I mean, I, I, I'm dead serious. You know, I may be because, you know, as I look over my life right now, and, you know, there are some beautiful women out here in this world, but beauty don't keep a man. Love do. And I realize that when you were willing to love me behind my conditions, I was like, man, this one hell of a woman. And I ain't letting you go. So I said, yeah, baby, let's get married. That's how you said it, too, y'all. That's how you really <laughs> said it. So, well, let's get married. But, I mean, it's rare, you know, and, and I don't. it's one thing that I want to clear up. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, or whoever out there in this world that what we have is rare. And don't automatically think, and I ain't holding my, you know, myself high or anything like that, but don't automatically think that, you can find some man who is incarcerated. He's going to come out and he's going to treat you. And he's going to give you the world because sometimes that's not true because a lot of men in prison, they run game. Just like a lot of men in church, in the streets or whatever, they run game. But my love was genuine because of Christ. That's it. You know, in my heart, I gave everything up. I said, Lord, I said, I'm going to come out here a new man came out a married man and I just came out here to just prove to the world and to you that baby you made the best choice and the best decision that you could ever make in your life or any other life that you might encounter and I did the same thing I love you love you too ah stop it gal <laughs> <laughs> so silly so as far as um so with you thinking about the marriage and everything and you said let's get married, what was our journey of figuring out that conclusion? Well, what really solidified our marriage and what really let me know 
that we were meant to be is the day of our wedding. When we were in that chapel in prison in FCI Milan, and I'm gonna tell y'all this, that Milan had this practice that once you leave this visitation room, ain't no return. But as we were in there waiting on the pastor and the pastor didn't come, and they told you that you had to go on the day of our wedding. And as you walked through those doors, I was like, Lord, she gonna be so hurt to go home. You were in this pretty dress. You had your guests with you. Thank you, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> you had your guests with you. And I mean, when you, when you exited those doors, I was like, Lord, she gonna be so hurt. I was like, Lord, she gonna be like, I knew this wasn't meant to be. And at that particular moment, I got down on my knees and, you know, I had favor with the staff. I ain't going to lie because of the way I conducted myself throughout those years. And as I began to pray, the officer, he said, Lord, I'm sorry. We prayed too. Yeah, most definitely. We prayed. We prayed. We prayed. Yeah. I was like, Lord. We prayed too. And I'm going to post that picture too. Yes, yes, so yes. And you ain't had your ring on there. So they no. know. They know. But I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all about prayer. The power of prayer. But as we begin to pray, and you exited, and I prayed again, the officers was like, Lord, I'm sorry. They was like, where you get this pastor from? <laughs> I was like, I got him from another inmate. <laughs> he told me about it. He was like, well, how much did you pay him? And I told him, out. he was like, man, I'm sorry. He looked like he got you. And as this officer began to grab his radio, it came across the radio. The pastor has entered the building. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> like, no, but it's so crazy, y'all. He he telling y'all his end, but my end was me going through it and I hear the door shut. And then you gotta go through these, you gotta go through a gate afterwards. And then as that gate open, I look up, <laughs> I see this pastor taking his keys out, <laughs> taking his belt off and everything, and I'm looking, I'm like, are you the pastor? And my sister like, yeah, are you the pastor? Thank you, Lonnie. And, and he was like, yes. He was like, you bet? I'm like, yes. I'm like, oh, my God, they're making us leave, and they won't let us do that. And then the other guard up there with me um, coming to visit him, y'all, I went to, what was that, every weekend? I was yes, serious. you were faithful. <laughs> I was going to see him every weekend. So with the guard up there, they already knew who I was because, it was like, I was dang a veteran there. <laughs> you almost had a badge. <laughs> <laughs> but with, with us, uh, with me coming up there all the time, he ended up asking, like, and he was like, the pastor has arrived, and basically, as far as me still coming back. And the guy, the first thing he said, we usually don't do this. Hey, man, once you <laughs> leave, that's it. Yes, he was like, usually don't do this but he was telling me he like you you a really good girl like you you always come here you be respectful you say hi to us yeah. everything even with some of us mean and having a bad day <laughs> <laughs> but they still let me back through yes they and did. how did it go on your end when they opened those doors and I seen that smiling face with them tears in your eyes, Lord. Why he do it? Why he do it? It's like why he do it, Jesus. <laughs> hey, babe, I thought they was gonna lock me up because I had the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's like you push hard the way. And it's so crazy because right when we got there, we was like, all right, we got to get to it. Let's do it. Hold on. What pastor? Get your tail on it. Let's do it. <laughs> yep. And then we, yes. we, we did this thing and we said our vows, switched our rings. And it was, y'all already know it don't last too long after that. <laughs> they like, y'all already seen each other. See ya. Long as a busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the door shut. <laughs> but as I begin to walk back to my cell, to my unit. I see my buddies, they was in the mid, you know, they were in the windows and things of that nature. And one of my buddies, Kenneth, he, he held his fingers up and I held, I held my ring up like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
and they were so happy for me. And I was just like, you know, when I got back to my cell, I was just like, I was like, God, once again, you showed up and showed out. I said, the devil is a lie. I was like, no weapon formed against me will prosper. It didn't prosper. Because here we are today. Mm -hmm. Still married, baby. Still married. Ah! And it's funny because we have our dates and inside our rings and everything and our names. It's it's really nice. Um, I, I'm happy. This is a little bit. No, no you better stop. <laughs> <laughs> they like, I knew it. No, I mean, but I... No, I'm real happy. I'm content. Um, don't get me wrong. We have our problems. We have our days. We are, we not, are not perfect. perfect. Once well, again... <laughs> You always Once again, no, nah, I'm just saying because, you know, I mean, people view Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. I mean, we struggle like any other couple, you know, but it's one thing that I, I'm, I'm so thankful for. It's just like when the devil began to whisper to me, I got people that I whisper him. I got mom and I got my mom. Then I remember those times when <laughs> you used to run up and down the highway. I remember those letters. I remember those pictures. I remember how you used to tell me, baby, I love you. Oh, my God. No, I'm serious. Ba I, I'm serious, though, babe. I remember all that. And that right there, it keeps me. It really does. And, uh, you know, right now, I think I've been home with it was like 14, 15, uh, almost 15 months. And I still say I can't do no better. And you, you know, they say a bird in their hand beats two in the bush. A uh, vet in my hand beat any other woman that I will ever encounter. Because, baby, you one in a million. That you are. You are, too. No, 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 no. No, because you always want to do all the compliments and stuff. And when I say, nah. I just want to take care of you. I know that. And, and you're doing that. We're taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. But you complete me, like, all the way, 100%. You were doing good without me. No, so true. I'm just saying, you really were. We, babe, we compliment and we reflect each other. Yes, we, we do. Yes, yes. Yes, we do. But um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit with y'all. Um with I know a lot of people are curious about our mothers. Mm -hmm. So Jane's mom was so mean to me at first, y'all. Ooh, like that first day at visit. Yeah, because <laughs> it was one time I I came to see him and I always sat on this one side against the wall, and then it's so crazy because I I don't know it was weird. It was like she was looking at me and I was looking like. And looking at her, it was like we kind of synced in him, and we already knew something. Mm -hmm. Something was there. But boy, the first time I met her, <laughs> she was so big. She didn't want to say, mm hmm. <laughs> That's all she was like. Mm hmm. That's <laughs> all she was doing. It was just, she was filling me out, too. Right. At the same time. Y'all had the same spirit, really. I, yeah, yeah. It, it's scary, because, yeah, I, I could have been her child. <laughs> And, and my mom could have been his child. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. But it was just, he was just so mean that after a while, he like, go ahead, babe, just call it. Just go keep calling it. He's like, mm -mm. I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't calling <laughs> it. And mm -mm. it was just so crazy. And then it was just like, one day she just called me and left a message. And um, she was saying, like, she wanted to talk to me and stuff. And then I was telling her, um, she was telling me how, like, she haven't been feeling good and stuff. And I recommended her to go to Cleveland Clinic because, I mean, you know, they got some good doctors at Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you think so? I'm going to think about it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So it was just crazy. And two weeks later, she called me. She said, Vet, I'm going to see a doctor at Cleveland Clinic. But it was like University of Hospital, and she wanted me to meet her there when she came down here. And I went with her, to, um, and they ended up admitting her, and they kept her. And during that time, she was there for, like, five days? Mm, she was there about three or five days, something like that. Yeah, she was there. And then during that time, um, me and James was married already. Right. 
So, you know, she she gonna get used to me anyway. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But um my mom, she ended up coming with me. Yes. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, if y'all would have seen them two sitting together talking, man, it was like the picture will speak for itself. Yes, it was so powerful. They were so much alike. They were hard headed. <laughs> they want to listen. They knew everything. <laughs> they tell you what to do. Like it was just a, an amazing experience. Just me witnessing our moms together That's and right. the first thing they talk about is me having a big old chunky baby chunky baby <laughs> <laughs> she said well, i had a dream you had a big oh but no baby. no babe but th- at this particular time she said i'm gonna tell you about my dream but don't tell vet then did she turn around and tell me <laughs> 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 but <laughs> So that was funny, but it was just a, it was a good experience, and just the fact that his his mom and my mom they didn't know we were getting married, but no. just the fact that when they see that we both got married, they know us, and a lot of people know me for for certain. Mm. I I ain't never been married before, but I was not about to marry anybody, especially somebody in prison <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like everyone it's a lot of people that say that to you and me right. you must got to be somebody special amen <laughs> <laughs> for you to marry i feel special <laughs> so it, it, he he is he's very special he's very different not slow but special yeah <laughs> <laughs> short <laughs> bus <See>? no <laughs> you see no but it's just the fact that he just treated me so good. It was more or less a, a energy type thing. He, it was just that, I don't know, y'all. It, it's hard to explain. But it's just something that's told me, like, he is the one. Right. And I just Some went told with me. it. And yeah. it's to a point where our mothers just loved. Right. They loved us. Man, I, I'm telling you, uh <clears throat> I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> I got out of prison uh, November of uh, 2019. And uh, January uh, 7th. 2018. Oh, 20, it was 2018? Yes. Excuse me. I mean, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I mean, it feel like I've been free forever because that's how your love made me feel. Okay. Girl. <laughs> no, okay. So I got out November 2018. And my mom ended up passing away like 40 some days, 40 some days after my arrival home. And, uh, but when did she go in a coma? What, like three weeks after I was home, yeah. you know, but she was able to see me come home. She was able to see us together and we had the videos and all that. She's still telling me to take my shoes off as I came through the door. And she was like, Ben, I already know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got to deal with that too. <laughs> but, you know, I was just so thankful to the Lord because he allowed for my mom to see me free and see me happy and, you know, to see me with my wife interacting and going to church. And, you know, remember that first time when I went to church and, we recorded it and stuff. And yes, he was preaching. <laughs> he was preaching. No, but but they but mom got to see that. Yeah, and you she know did. she was so she was so. She was like, go ahead, son. <laughs> but you know she seen you that you were right there, and she seen the man that I, you know, because throughout all those years of my incarceration, I was telling my mom I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, but I would also tell her that mom, I ain't gonna say what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And always been like he, he's well, like know. that, y'all. He he don't do no talking. Right. So when she was able to see that, she was happy. Yes. She was content. Yes. He was over her house more than me. <laughs> but you know, it's like uh, you know, I I was just thankful for the Lord, you know, for you know preserving me and you know for keeping her, you know, uh, throughout all those years of my incarceration because. I don't know if everybody uh, noticed, but I wasn't supposed to come home until February. And 2019. Right, right. So uh, God allowed for me to come home in November, 
and he allowed for my mom to, you know, to see me alive and happy. So that once again, you know, it solidified the fact of how good our God is because I don't know what I would have did how I, uh, you know, had my mom passed away and I was still incarcerated and she didn't, you know, didn't get to, you know, see me become the man that I profess to be. You know, and so, you know, that right there. You was able to tell her you had a job and everything. Oh, yeah, I remember. I'll never forget this. I was on a bus, and it was cold that day, too. <laughs> and I had went to this factory, and even though it was paying, like, nine something an hour, when they said you hired, I was so happy. I called mom on the bus. Mom, I got a job. <laughs> she was like, I told you the Lord to do it. I told you. <laughs> But she, you know, once again, she began to see that everything I said I was going to do, I was going to do it, even though I was on the bus. Mm-hmm. You know. So, uh, you know, a few days, like, I believe, uh, me and Dad, we had went to, uh, we had a men's brunch, in, and uh, we were there with the brothers from the church, and a call that came across uh, my dad's phone, and it said, uh, Joe, you need to hurry up and get to the hospital. And dad looking at me like, what's going on? He was like, Alice is in the, she's in intensive care. And I was like, his dad was like, what? I was like, what, dad, what's going on? He's like, your mom is in a coma. And this was like on a Saturday and that Friday, I had called mom to tell her that I got a job and I was on the bus, and but I was still happy and you know, and for my mom to be in a coma the next day, I was like, no, no. So, you know, dad and I, you know, we went to, uh, we made it down to the hospital and man, uh, and the doctor, they were so blunt. They was like, your mom fell and she hit her head and don't look like she going to be coming back. I'm like, how y'all know all so soon? It's like, I'll start praying. I'm like, Lord, I know you would do it again. Lord, help my mama. I'm just coming home. Lord, I don't need this. Help my mama. But January 7th, uh, 2019, mom passed away. And I'll never forget, uh, I was in bed that night. I was in the, I was in the half, I was still in the halfway house. And uh, my aunt called me. She was like, you all right? I was like, yeah. I was like, what's going on? She was like, your mom passed away. And I wanted to be angry at God, but then again, I said, I said to the devil, I said, you a lie. I was like, I ain't going to be angry. I was just thankful. I was just thankful that, you know, mom got to see me come home. He got to see me with you. And I was just like, Mom, you in heaven now. I was like, Mom, you gonna be able to see, you still gonna be able to see the man that I can I have become. And I'll never forget that I had called your mom the next morning. And I was like, Mom, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. She was like, <laughs> She's just like, <laughs> not on my watch. <laughs> she was like, uh uh-uh. uh. She said, your mama ain't raised you. She ain't raised you like that. She was like, you need to be strong. She was like, you got me. And from that, from that moment on, you know, it just, your mom, she really, she really became like my mom. She would call me son. She would be like, I'm talking about, it, there was very, if, if I would call her, and she didn't say, son, I'd be like, mom, what's going on? She's like, oh, hey, son, <laughs> what's going on? But, but, you know, but she began to tell me, you know, that I'm going to be all right. She was always telling me, you got me. She's like, I know your mom. She was like, James, boy, if you ever have any problems, she was like, call me. She's like, if you have problems with my daughter, call me. And... I remember she came at this particular time. Uh, I think it was Mother's Day, around Mother's Day. When we came, when she came to Toledo. Right, right. When you came to Toledo. Yeah. She came because she knew that it was gonna be hard for me. Yeah. 
Your first Mother's Day without her. My first Mother's Day without my mom. And mom came. And I remember you and I, we, they had gave me permission to, uh, the halfway house that gave me, I was still in, in the halfway house. They gave me permission to uh, come come to the house and we went to the mall, you and I, and we went and got mom and cousin hat, those big, <laughs> those beach hats in the bag, what is it? you yeah, know what I'm saying? beach hats and all purse and stuff at JCPenney. Right, but I knew that, I knew that it was going to be rough and mom knew it was going to be rough, so. She came to Toledo and she made my first Mother's Day without my mom feel like I might have lost my mom, but I gained a mom. You know, and I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that I had your mom. I, I still got her and <clears throat> she got to see what kind of man that I am and how much I really love her daughter. And she got to, she just gave you to me. Yes, she did, at least. <laughs> she, I mean, I'm like, you know, it's because at first she was like, I don't want to talk to him. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait till you come home. home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, man, babe. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a rough. It's been real rough. Just even, I don't know if uh, many of you have seen a video of him and my mom dancing in the kitchen and everything yeah. having a good time and his dad was able to come down and we had a ball in my mom's backyard we just had a good time and during these during the time his mom was um in the hospital after that you know my mom was in and out too yeah <clears throat> she um kept having troubles my mom had um Actually, during the time she had three stints put in. Yeah. During the three different times she had been in and out of the hospital, she had heart congestive failure. So, it um, it just got to a point where the way her heart beats, it accumulates fluid in her lungs. So it got to a point where we already knew when something was wrong because she had make a noise like. <clears throat> yeah, she did do that. She <clears throat> she did do that, and that's how we know fluid is in her lungs. And you know, my mom just 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 rolling it out, and and you know, it was, it's so crazy. It's like she was ready for it. She was, <laughs> but she was just like my mom. Yeah, hard headed. Hard headed. Went to take her medication and. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was so shocking, and I was always, because I thought mom was like superwoman. Yeah. Because she would be in intensive care. And come out of it the next day. Not only come out of it, we would be at the club on that weekend. I know. We, have, we would either be at the club or a concert or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought, I'm serious, I really thought mom was superwoman. Yeah. You know, because I would come, I would, you know, because I was working those long hours, 12-hour shifts, and. You would call me, be like, James, mom in the hospital. And so as I can, I come. I drive all the way there after doing the 12-hour shifts. And I come in. Mom's supposed to be in intensive care. She kicking it like she at the club in, in the hospital. Like, yeah. hey, what's going on? Everybody, hey, what's up? And this and nothing, <laughs> and all this and that. So it's us seeing her snap out of it so many times. Right. And then we think that she going to snap out of this time. But this time... um. From the second to the last, though, she was unconscious for a while. Mm -hmm. And she got out of it. And she was actually um, unconscious for a day. Yes. That time. And we knew right then and there, like, okay, it's getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Each time she go in there. And this time, um, me and James went to the haunted house. Man, what was that in Canada or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I said I had a house. I think it was seven floors of hell. I think that's where we Yeah, when well, you got so scared when we was in line. <laughs> little midget scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's crawling on the floor. <laughs> but we went there, and then when we left, we we sent my mom pictures and stuff. We took pictures yeah. being there, and we called her. 
She was like, y'all, I'm tired. She said that. She said she was tired, but it just to a point where me and James had a chance to tell her, I love you. Yeah, we did. And she had a chance to say, I love you back. That's right. And then we got home, and it was almost like three, four hours later. Yep. My my brother called and said she, she in the hospital again. And this time, she didn't come out of it. She, she, um, she ended up um, flatlining for a good 30 minutes this time. Mm. So, it created um, damage, brain damage. Brain damage, yeah. So, that's what made her not come out of it. And it's so crazy because, you know, everybody has that hope and that faith there. And not only that, is like I told you that I used to think that mine was invincible. I just knew she was going to snap back out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I never forget that time when uh, you were you were still in the room. And I went out <clears throat> and I went and I started praying and just my, my, my spirit told me. And I'm not saying the spirit told me wrong, but it was just like everything going to be all right. She going to make it, you know, and. Uh, and when she didn't make it, I was like, not again, God. Yeah. I was just like, my mom, my mom ain't even been dead. She hasn't been passed away for a year. I was like, my mom came to become a surrogate mom to me. I was like, God, you ain't going to do this again. And not only are you not going to do this again, you're going to do it to my wife. But. Like David, like David used to say, though he slay me, or was it Job? Or that no, was Job. It was like Job said, though he slay me, which he was talking about the devil. He was like, Lord, I'm gonna still trust you. And that right there, babe, I believe that just caused our bond to just get stronger and stronger because we both had lost our lifelines, which was our mothers. And you know, as you heal me. I was able to heal you, and those were some fresh wounds for me. Mm. And for you to go through the same thing, I couldn't. I really couldn't believe it, but I was just so thankful that we had each other, babe. Yeah. I really, and and that right there, it just shows me that we were meant to be together because I don't know if you realize this, but we first went through those tragic times you with the guy and me with losing her we healed each other then and then as our mothers passed away we healed each other again so that right there it shows me that the bonds that we have the foundations that we have everything we endured was meant to keep us together and I'm just so thankful to the Lord that I have a woman like you that helped me not only through all that throughout incarceration throughout the times when I felt as if nobody loved me you were there yeah I'm the the same way Mm -hmm. and I want people to know like the way you see us happy on social media doing things, accomplishing goals, and all that. We have many times of us getting on our knees praying a lot. Um, It'll be times when James is feeling down, missing his mom on top of my mom, and then me feeling down, missing my mom on top of his mom. It's been nights where I didn't sleep at all. Um, It's been nights where I just be up just crying, watching videos, and just just not being able to sleep. It was times when I just broke down screaming, uncontrollably. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) He and he been been (laughs) holding the fork down because I have my moments. And sometimes people are like, you're so strong, you're so strong. Yes, I'm strong, but I do have my moments. Right, and that's one of the things that I have to realize, and a lot of people out there got to realize, that you can still be strong and cry. Right. You know, and you know because you ain't superwoman, you ain't perfect, you know, uh, 
we all have our moments where we just need to shed those tears. And, you know, there'll be times when I might be just driving down the street. And you don't know this, but I might be playing my little gospel music. And I be like, Lord, I need your strength. I need your help. But it's like you always find a way to call on me. <laughs> you know what I'm Like, babe, what's going on? You all right? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, man, can I keep something to myself? <laughs> but I mean, seriously, you always do that. I mean, that lets me know that, you know, when I don't hear a word from the Lord, he's sending that word through you, that word of comfort. Calm. Calm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's it, it feels good, though, to just have you and stuff because I think I, I don't feel empty. You know, <coughs> you know, mine was my best friend. We talked to each other. Both five right. times a day, we'd be on the phone and not say not one word. We'd just be breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it just, I don't know, it just, I had trouble going to sleep and I had trouble waking up because I always talked to her before I went to sleep and I spoke to her when I wake up. And then I went through a phase where I had to sleep smelling her, like I had to have her clothing and stuff. Let me ask you this question. How would you tell people out there that if they don't have, like, a significant other, what can they do to help in their grieving process? Turn their pain into power. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we, we all grieve, not even just a death. We grieve off family. We grieve off things that we've been through in life. Grieving comes in different forms, just like mental illness comes in different forms. Right. And it has to be a way that we could not let our pain define us. Right. Not let it carry us on our day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. When we won't let that pain carry us, we have to defeat it, just like we're defeating the devil. Right. The devil brings that upon us. We just have to shake it. Now, Now, what about women and men out there who who are holding things inside of them as far as things they endured throughout their childhood throughout their teen years throughout their adult years would you say that you know it's it's like a healing process for them to let it out yes mm-hmm. and i feel like if you express yourself it don't, it don't even have to be with someone right it could be with god Right. You could write it down, mm-hmm. read it in the scripture, just how you taught me to read Psalms 91. Oh, okay. You added names <laughs> to it. Right. You know, we added our, our parents. We added each other. Right. We added it just when you read the word, add yourself to right. it and, and take out other things. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that God brought you to it in order for you to be a blessing to somebody else. I believe that each and every one of us out there, we have something to share and tell, you know, tell others because you never know what the next person might have endured throughout their lives. And you just might be that that breakthrough for them. You know, a lot of people, you know, I, I mean, if God brought you through, seriously, if he brought you through it, he brought you through it for a reason. Mm-hmm. Get out there, write a book. Get on stage, get on the corner, yell it out your window, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. as you're driving down the street, you know, telling everybody what God brought you through. I mean, mm-hmm. because that's how you free. They say pressure bust pipes. You got everything inside of you, and it's just eating you up. Let it out. Yeah. It'll, it'll tear you up. Like, it'll right. tear you up real bad to a point where you, you will create some form of an illness because I, 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 I strongly believe that as you were behind that computer screen that first that first day when you sent me out that when you sent that email and you expressed yourself to me that was your therapy right there it was it was because I really you know I talk to mom all the time right you know but sometimes it's like speaking to someone else that you don't know, that don't know you. That won't judge that you. That will and won't, yeah, won't right. judge you either. It's just they give you a different perspective on your thought process to make you feel better 
but yet still be honest with you. Right. Like you need to get your shit together. Right. Or you need to not think that way because you're beautiful. Right. You know, just different things. And it's not things that you want to hear. It's just the authentic things right. that you need to hear. And see, and let me let me tell the world this that I know I'm not the most handsome man in the world, but the way you uplift me and the way you tell me how I look, you make me walk with confidence, girl. Yeah, y'all, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> But I do the same thing, but it's yes, true. We do but that it's with but each it's other. true. Yeah. It's true because that's how I see you. I see you as really the most beautiful woman in the world. And in your eyes, you be like, man, I ain't, but really you are. You be doing that too. I you know. Be like, oh, babe, stop. <laughs> stop. You always well, look, I mean, I, but see, I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to just be listening to us. I want them to watch us. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like I'm at a point where I just want to share my testimony of many things because sometimes people don't think I've been through. You've been through a lot, and I I have really been through a lot. Just just a little bit of what I said on here, I've been through a way more right than, than what you think. Right. It's just that I I carry it well because I just feel like I don't want to dwell on things that I have no control of. Right. However, I do have control of my thoughts. I have control of my life. I have so much control that has to do with me only where I want to fix it. Right. I always look for flaws that I've had, had and have, and I try many ways to fix them. Right. Be, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we named our company Humble Beginnings because we got to always remain humble throughout it all. We don't ever want to have the big head. We don't ever want to think that we did this on our own. We did this simply because, first of all, we gave it to the Lord. And second of all, we were willing to endure and do everything together. Because when a, when a man or a woman enters a relationship and they thinking they're doing it all on their own, nine times out of ten, if you ask me, that relationship going to fail. I strongly believe, and this is the formula that I live and I'm going to continue to live by that, Babe, we got to always continue to put God first. Yeah. And whenever, I, whenever I'm lacking, I love how you say, baby, let's pray. Yeah. Well, I, I'm talking about I was this holy man who spent all these years reading the Bible and this and that. But you'd be like, babe, let's pray. And I'm talking about I don't care what I might be going through. The devil might be whispering all in my ear. But when you say, baby, let's pray, that breaks all yokes. Yeah, it do. And I want to tell you, thank you. It do. Because sometimes both of us get in our moods. And we both Leos, y'all. Mm-mm. <laughs> we both Leos. Our birthday was, what, a week apart? Mm, about two weeks. About two weeks mm-hmm. apart. So we both stubborn. We both have things that we set in our ways. We both think we know everything. No, you more than that. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we, we bump heads sometimes on certain things because it's like, no, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I, you don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's just we just go through it. But at the same time, at the end of the day, somebody going to end up laughing at somebody. Yeah. You, I think it's you. always you first, though. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say something stupid, but you you learn how to do that too. Yeah, I'm learning because y'all I'll be on ten. Ooh. I don't even want to talk nothing. I just be like I'm cool, and he be laughing at me when I talk with my hands. Do I? <laughs> I sometimes I gotta duck. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just be going off, and then you know, honestly, I I was set I was setting my ways a lot. I'm still working on it, but. Y'all know the independent woman thing. Mm. You know, I got this. I got this. I don't need no help. I've been (laughs) doing this. I got this and all that. And I've I've been used to that. I've been been grinding on my own. I've been getting money on my own. I've been doing a lot of things on my own. I ain't need no man to do nothing for me. So, and and then, you you know, at the same time, I, I brought it 
into our relationship. Not that heavy, though. I wasn't, like, I disrespectful No, no you weren't disrespectful. Yeah, I wasn't disrespectful with it and, like, say it to him. But it was just to a point where I'm opening up the door. Or Stop I'm it. going to get my own gas. Or Never I'm no go- more. <laughs> or I'm just doing everything. If I'm cooking... Or something. I'm doing the dishes too. No, he do the dishes. I even cooked tonight. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but it's just so many things I had to surrender. Like, okay, let you do this, this, and that. Thank and you. I really didn't realize how much I had on my plate until he came into my life because I was being everything. You were doing everything. You really I was, were. I was literally doing everything. I can't <clears throat> see how I've been doing it after so long. But, you know, it, it took me to realize your past, and it took me to understand, you know, that sometimes I do have to give you your form of independence, but still, you got to let me be the A king. Man. The king. Yes. You know, and, and I got to submit myself unto you, too. Yeah. Certain things that you do, I'd be like, man, I don't need you to do that. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, you know, I just think that, that we both flexible and we able to be, and I, I'm just, I'm thankful to that, you know, and, and our, you know, like you said, that's, that's our spirits, you know, these, this Leo, this, what you call them? Right. Yeah. A but <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, but you know, I'm willing to humble myself. Yeah. Yeah. We, and yeah, our humbleness is there. Yep. So, you know, this was, uh, you know, just us giving you guys a little piece of, uh, of our life. And we wanted to clear up any misconceptions. We didn't want anybody else to tell our story. We wanted you guys to really know that we human, we make mistakes. Uh, but we realize that the things that we endure throughout our lives is only to help others. You know, so if you have any questions... Please always be feel. I'm approachable. Even though I spent all those years in prison, I don't have this prison mentality because I always knew that eventually God was going to bring me home. Y'all, he is the YouTube king. YouTube and University. He's always. <laughs> YouTube University. <laughs> he's always reading everything. Um, why don't you tell us what you have, what you're doing right now? Well, of course, I have the janitorial services. Uh, we're doing landscaping, uh, uh, lawn care uh, for the elderly. That's one of my passions because while I was incarcerated, there was this woman named uh, Brenda Jackson who became my mentor, and she used and she lived in the city of Detroit. And she used to always tell me how it was hard for her to. She was seventy-two at this particular time. She was like, uh, "It's hard for her to get anybody to come and." shovel her snow, cut her grass, and this and that. And that really, you know, it really affected me. So I was like, God, when I come home, I'm going to get me a landscaping company so I can also cut grass and then come provide the services for the elderly and things of that nature. And, you know, it gave me a passion. But not only that, I I realized it is, uh, it paid the bills. <laughs> So, uh, you know, of course, like I said, janitorial landscaping and we getting the snow removal. We we have so many endeavors, so many businesses that we have our foot in, our both our foots, your foot, my foot. And uh, we're going to build on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have a lot going on. Um, real estate, too. Yes, of course. Uh, my foot. And then, of course, we're going to push life her. Yes. Look forward to hearing life him yes <laughs> life him is coming y'all. yes 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 get him all the way together but you know i babe i do i love how you know uh me being a man it's like man don't you want your own platform i don't mind submitting and letting everybody know that you set the stage you built the foundation and i'm gonna just put the bricks up on it all right. <laughs> All right, Bricklayer. <laughs> so, is there anything, um, what's something uplifting and inspiring you could tell to women? Because you know, most of my listeners are women, but however, with men seeing that you are on here, 
mm-hmm. and I'm sure some men are going to want to listen and hear both of us share. Mm-hmm. What is something, okay, first answer this one. Mm-hmm. What is something that you could tell men on how to be towards women? And how do they have to be as a man before being with a woman? Well, <clears throat> that's really... It's a hard answer because a lot of the men, they didn't grow up in a home that I grew up in. A lot of men nowadays coming up in single family homes and this and that. But I would, I would ask those men to look at examples. And that's one of the things I walked throughout my incarceration. I used to look at examples. I used to look at this man. I say, how did this man do 15 and 20 years? And as I began to watch him, I began to see his conduct. So I would advise that the young men out there, that you look at a man, a married man, and you look at his conduct. You see, if he's been married for years, you see how he treats his wife. And then you begin to, you know, be be very observant and be like, and just learn. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have questions, you know, I was in the store the other day and I seen this, uh, this older gentleman, he opened the door for his, his wife. And I was like, wow, you know, had I been a young man, I would have picked up on that. I would have seen this old gentleman right here. And I, as soon as I seen my woman, she used to try, she might be trying to ask, uh, open the door. I'd be like, hold on, baby, let me get that for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I'm observing. Right. So observe, you know, and now, like I say, no one has a perfect life, a perfect marriage, a perfect whatever. But learn from those who came before you. When you see how they treat their woman, not how they say they treat them, but when you see it with your own eyes, that's how I would do it. That's good. A lot of people don't have the, a lot of people always say, I've never seen anybody do this. I've never seen anybody do that. But if you're willing to see, right, you will see. You it. will see it. It doesn't technically have to be a person that you know personally. Right, right. It could just be a person on how they move. And to a point where, dang, what he did, that was pretty dope. Right. Instead of being like, oh, man, you a right. sucker, man. Right. No, I mean, listen, let me explain something to you. We used to say, the, when I was in the streets back in the days, I used to be like, man, them square dudes, this and that. But the square dudes was the one that was on the street with their wives and their children. All the so-called thugs and whatever, they was the one locked up. We was the fools. I pick and choose to be a square any day as long as I can be here to love you, baby. Any day. Nice and square ass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is something that you could tell women? Like, you know, a lot of women want to be loved. A lot of them may be in a, just ready to submit to a man and have a real relationship, mm-hmm. have a good time, do nice things. And, you know, a lot of women see how happy I am or a lot of women see different things but explain how you have your happiness towards me and explain to them how they could have happiness and to a point where don't think every man is the same right first of all I say if you find a man that know how to love his first woman which is his mama and respect her I ain't talking about all that hood stuff and all that. What I'm talking about, really respect and love his mama. What you think he going to do for you? Do you think he would love you because he know that you had the potential to be the mother of his children or whatever? I believe if a man know how to really, truly love, it starts in that home. If there's any dysfunction as far as disrespect then I would run away from that man you know I, I really would because I really I love my mama now did I do everything she told me to do no I didn't because I wouldn't end up in prison all those years but I respected my mama you know so find a man that respects his mother find a man that loves God and once again he might love God, but he might not do all the things of God. But eventually, I believe if God is really in him, 
he'll really know how to love you. And how how should women do with themselves? You know, a lot of women don't know. It's a it's a time for me to heal to submit to you. Yeah, but first of all, I believe, and I I this is me. I'm not perfect. I believe first a woman gotta love herself. If a woman can love herself, provide for herself, like had an independence is like you, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to use you as an example. You know, if a man comes and he wants to uh, provide, love you, and treat you the way you know you want to be treated, submit. So what about to a point where, you know, you say square dudes. Um, sometimes women want that street mm. dude. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, Ain't nothing wrong with that. I know that, but sometimes women want that, but he still wouldn't give her the full pledge of everything. So, and then, a lot of girls, a lot of guys that would approach him, he's a good man. Mm-hmm. But, they like, no, nah, he corny. Okay, but what let me like let, let me say this. Where you think they gonna those same women? Where you think they gonna be at when they fifty or sixty years old? Mm, damn, where they gonna be? <laughs> Looking for that thug, they ain't gonna never be there. When that square man who getting up and going to work, who got his own business, who really loves you, you pass them up for somebody who has the potential to either be dead or locked up. I want the for show money. Give me somebody that's gonna be there. When I'm 50, 60, 70 years old. Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes we look for the wrong things. And I was, I was one of those women. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want the the square dude. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I had a pattern. And from you saying about how a man loves his mother, mm-hmm. that was one of the things I loved about you because you loved your mother. However, when I look through my past of certain men that I have dated, their mothers didn't even raise them, and they hated their mothers. Hmm. So it, it is a, a difference in so many things of when you say that. But at the same time, it's not that your prison sentence and you being in prison, it was just you as a man, who you were. You were authentic, man. You were consistent. You know, it's always, after so long, somebody gonna break the ice. <laughs> Just like you was looking for me to change, <laughs> I was looking for your ass to change, too. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we be like, let me see what you gonna do. Right, and, right. And, you know, we never switched up on each other. We right. always stay, you know, true to each other at all times. And I, I could say one thing, um, our communication gets stronger and stronger. Right. You do have to, you have to make sure. And like I told you a long time ago, it's like, no matter what we go through is we had to communicate. Yeah. You know, and I was bad at that. I was the bad one. At right, communication. Right. And you know, I, you know, I, I humbly say that I was stubborn too. And you know, there, there, there's my aunts and all that tell you that boy was so stubborn when he was a kid, but you know, uh, hold, hold on. Let me once again say, Thank you for my Auntie Mel, my Auntie Jan, my Aunt Van, all you guys. Thank you for your love and your prayer throughout all. I had to put that out there because it was some strong women. Yes, they are. You know, they they, they helped me. Yes. You know, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I look and I said, man, I was never really alone. I might have felt alone, thought I was alone, but, man, them women, life hurt. Them women out there. Help save James Lord. Yes, you know that's right. And then I met the queen of all women. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some positive words you can say before we shake you out? My positive, some positive words I really, you know, I had to say is, you know, first of all, I give honor and praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus. I give honor and praise to my beautiful wife my parents, and I'm just, you know, I, I'm just a guy who was, you know, who thought the street life was all this and that, and that who had to submit his will 
to a higher power, a good woman, and who came out here in these streets to do everything that he can. And to the, I want to let everybody know this, that when you look at somebody, don't judge them because when people look at me, they be like, he look like a square, but they don't know my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I always, I always told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you bring me through this, I'm going to come out and I'm going to do your will. So for those out there, you know, you might think that it's life and it's glamour out there in those streets. Man, that ain't what's it. I'd rather be a guy who get up early in the morning, work a job to provide for his family, who knows that when it's all said and done, that tomorrow ain't promised. Mm -hmm. No, tomorrow ain't promised. And me and him got this thing. If we mad at each other, we can't leave the house mm -mm. without a kiss or a mm -mm. hug or nothing mm -mm. like that. Mm -mm. That's no, rule. no, no, we can't do that. And you check me on that, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I, I try to do it. Yeah, you check me too. <laughs> we just checking people. But you know, babe, but I, I'm serious, man. You know, I, I, my main thing throughout all this and throughout everything I had to endure that, you know, I just want to be a positive influence for young men and young women out there. And that's why I'm so hard on myself, you know, because... I want people to see that this guy who spent all these years in prison, you know, who was this form or whatever, came out and gave life his all. And that's exactly what you're doing. Because y'all, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. This man been grinding. The little bit of stuff he just said that he got going on now. It's, it's bigger than that. We just can't expose all or anything like nah, that. No, I don't want nobody to build on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, we have a lot going on, and it's just it's all about timing. Yeah, they going to see. Oh, yeah. Tune so. in. <laughs> You're so damn silly. <sighs> okay, well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Life Her Podcast, where we help heal women all over the world, and now we can heal some men, too. Coming up soon, like him. Love her like you can love nobody else because you might not get another. <laughs> oh, boom. <laughs> you sick. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Life Her Podcast, and also Facebook. And check out our website, Life Her Podcast. And we'll see you guys We have updated a lot of information. We have media press on there. And we also have the upcoming event which will be July 18th. And just listen to our podcast episodes. We have the first eight episodes up. And of course, you're hearing this one now. And you can purchase Life Her merchandise. I am Yvette Lloyd. I am Life Her. Love yourself, ladies. Life Her. Life Her.